Hey, what's up guys? Uh, today we're going to be looking at something that's kind of being requested and something that um, I guess I should talk about now that I'm actually doing some commentary and that's uh, looking at how, how I like to play light tanks on maps that aren't Westfield or Proc or something like that that are more like city based. <clears throat> and I'll be honest, obviously... Uh, they're obviously not the best maps for them, but they come up fairly often, so having an idea of how to play them is pretty pretty important. Or, uh, especially if you're going for marks or the well, next type of line, because you need to know how to get a lot of damage or assisted damage. <coughs> now, <coughs> most of the time, you're not going to get a lot of assisted damage generally in lights on these type of maps usually these games are a little uh, different as we just slam dunk that other light tank but there are some exceptions to that rule uh, it helps if you're playing a tank like this with the HE rounds and that you can get a good amount of assisted on these type of maps if you're tracking people with the HE in these uh, derp lights but if you're something that only has like an 85 millimeter or something like that you're not going to do a lot of tracking you can still do some assisted uh, especially if the enemy team is like this and they just sit in the open uh, that helps but your general role for scouting on these type of maps whether it's Pilsen doing the type of thing I just did there is you're gonna possibly spot them, the enemy team that is, all crossing uh, very quickly. Uh, there's the same type of spot. You may have seen it on any of my videos on this is, uh, Himmel Store, where I can spot them really quickly and get an idea of where they're all going. And it can also help if you're in a platoon or even if your team is possibly looking at the map, which good luck with that. But. <clears throat> It, it can help show where they're moving out and deploying to on the map, basically. And that's kind of your role in the form of actual scouting on these type of maps. Um, but besides that, you're really going to have to learn how to do damage uh, for the most part. And just kind of learn how to exploit people looking in the wrong way. Uh, no lines of sight on these type of maps. And granted, you can always use this as a sort of how I scout like Pilsen, uh, or how I scout uh, Ensk, which is the second video in this, if you want to. I've already done a how I scout Ensk, but this one's a little different because it's, uh, it's with the war variant since the, after the last update, you cannot see Ensk in anything above tier 7, I think. Tier 7 is the highest. I could be wrong on that. But you see here, we're just doing a lot of going for drive wheels and stuff. Uh, just tracking people in place. That's how you're going to get the assisted damage that you're going to need to get those high totals like that. <clears throat> and again, it's just about poking lines of sight. Um, looking at the mini-map and stuff like that. And figuring out and peeking around corners. Using third person is pretty important too. As you can see, I can poke around the corner like by looking without actually going around. It's something I do on these type of maps, kind of. Uh, just to see where the enemy is facing their tank barrel, or if they just shot. So sound's also kind of important if you want to get some free damage in. And just having the sound enabled and being able to hear when something lets off the big gun is pretty key. Uh... Listen, usually most of these maps still have some cord, some field variant to them where you can spot for your team. Uh, especially if the game shifts to the second stage like it is kind of now. And here I'm trying to spot for Jack, I think. And just kind of spot their base and spot them going through the middle, apparently. This is a thing. And here my kind of hope was just to track the 100 and we do. Uh, so that's a good result. Like I said, just... 
being annoying in that kind of way is helpful. Again, you can only really do it in these dirt plates. Uh, some of you could probably do it if you're in the right matchup. You could probably do it in like an RU251 uh, in like a tier 9 game, but <clears throat> it's a lot easier with this style of gun. Uh, just because you don't really have to worry about aiming for the actual drive wheel, which is kind of hard to do, and plus your gun usually in a light tank. Unless it's some of the tier 10s, or in a good matchup against slower tier tanks and any of the others. Uh, going for drive wheel shots can be iffy, because you may not even do enough damage to detract them all the time. It's still a good practice to get into, and it's something I can still work on. Uh, if you're looking to just do something a little extra. Uh, we're going to just shoot the ground there. That's a smoke screen. Uh, so the girl doesn't see us moving to the right. But like I said, it's just using the terrain and just using the map to your advantage. You just need some good map knowledge usually. And just using your teammates. Again, I kind of say that for a lot of the uh, gameplays, a lot of the maps, is, I don't, it, it, it sounds bad, but using your teammates, but you're really going to have to focus on doing the unpredictable, which is always good. Now, unfortunately, you can't get yourself into situations like this, where... It's not ideal. You just have a Jaeger staring at you. Um. Yeah. So this is just risky. And now we're kind of just stuck. And this is where you don't want to find yourself. Is locked down by the TDs and stuff. So just having overall like map awareness. Of where stuff is. Is good. Because right now. I could probably still be in the field. Or if I had just gone full speed and went down and around, I would have been fine. But now that we're kind of just stuck and locked down by this tank destroyer, we're really not doing anything and we're probably done for the game basically. Which sucks. You really want to avoid these type of scenarios. It's easier on the wide open maps, but in these corridor -y, close space maps, it's going to be really, really difficult for you. Uh, just overall, I, obviously, I, I don't, like I said, I'm not a fan of getting these maps, that's obvious. But, you can still have good results in them. Um, like I said, just doing the third person peek. I don't like going around corners blind. Yeah, he wasn't looking there, but... I, I don't want to take unnecessary damage. And really, that's another thing. And it's something I picked up from, I, I guess, comp or just overall just smart play is not not making bad trades. Because the fact is, on these type of maps, you're probably going to have to trade hit points usually. This was one of the few scenarios where I didn't. And that was probably more towards their team to thank for that. But it usually... You want to worry about hit points on city maps probably more because you're just going to have to use them to trade shots with the other uh, the enemy tanks uh, fairly often. And I think the second game is going to show more of that, show more of the the flanking aspect of this. And again, it's going to show in the beginning. The initial spots that I'm talking about uh, earlier. In that, I, I always do with these maps, especially with Ents, because especially in the LTTB, which is what this is in, it's kind of a matchup. All I'm going to have to do to spot these people is literally move up maybe five feet, as you can see on the map right here. Like, my view range almost already covers the entire map. I'm just going to have to move up like one grid square, and I'm going to be spotting everything. And thanks to this crew, which keep that in mind, this is my crew. This is like 18 perks. I can fairly reliably not get spotted. Uh, it depends. Uh, again, this is a good matchup, so I can kind of take that into account too. Just taking him 
the matchup that you're in. And you see, we just do this initial spot, and we're going to see where their tanks are going, basically. Now, you're not going to spot all of them uh, most of the time, uh, depending on the map variant, because some of them may spawn on my right, which is their left. And you just won't spot them because they'll already be deployed and be behind buildings and stuff like that. But it helps get you an idea of who's crossing, who's going where. And then you can build that up as more, more tanks get spotted. And to start probing around, I guess, that's how I'd call it, say it, for weak spots where you can get some little shots of damage in. Like this. So I'm at like 390 meters right now. Uh... But we're going to unfortunately bounce off that great um, Scorpion G armor. Second time I get it, but yeah, the first shot, yeah, or the second. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. But at this point, we're just kind of searching for some shots right here for little tiny view, little tiny cracks. <coughs> just searching for those shots that eventually they do add up. Now, the issue with shooting through those little cracks is sometimes they're so small that they hit stuff. Uh, it's just part of the part of the process. Again, just keeping that map awareness is key. So you can always hit it T20, uh, shot from T29. It's kind of confusing on this part because there's so much stuff in the way uh, with all these trains and stuff. I mean, I can work to your advantage too. Because it gives you a decent amount of cover <coughs> to work with. But it's also annoying just in trying to drive around. Um, I see at this point, basically, that they don't have a ton, a ton over here. And this is kind of risky because I will be kind of solo. Especially when we spot another one of their tanks. But like here, we get side shots in safety 15, and he's not really expecting it. And I'm trying to get for the drive we here, and you see it doesn't really come off. But then the one that we just shoot right to the side does. Um, I really wish I could have kept him uh, tracked right here. But keeping him tracked versus a tank that's actually firing at us is more important. So we have to shift our uh, focus over to the T28, or the, the BK28. <coughs> Sorry. And then the T28. <laughs> but you see, we're already up to actually almost 3,000 assisted, which I was kind of like, okay, at this point, what in the world? You see, it's really risky, uh, but we're gonna, especially this tank, I feel I can <laughs> poke fairly reliably. And just having some tank knowledge is also important here on these type of maps. <coughs> um, excuse me. In that I, I feel like I can shoot the AT-15's Capola without him really getting a good shot on me. This is a little riskier because um, I had to poke further out to get the, the actual weak spot. And I'm just keeping an eye on this guy because he, he's really making misplays here. I'm just again waiting for him to fire and just taking advantage of those uh, walls basically. <coughs> And you see, we're just poking out just, just enough. Just enough. And unfortunately, that one I think I could have aimed a little better. And just gone right for the ball like that. And we wouldn't have taken that extra shot. But you see how... Just knowing what you're fighting and what tank you're in is pretty key to these type of maps. And that I'm going to be able to exploit his weak spot very easily from that point of view. Um... Now, I kind of wanted to go in this T29, and I really wanted to get unspotted. Using Mr. Uh, direction is also pretty pretty important on these types. The maps is getting unspotted, juking that you're going to go one way, and then go the other. And also, I would say another really important thing for these type of city maps is if you're fighting... Um, like these heavily armored tanks, 
or like an Oni, Oho, stuff like that, Freedom. Um, and you get the chance to take one of them off the board. I usually try to take it. And that's just because these type of maps, those tanks are selling and your teammates may struggle to kill. So if you get the opportunity to, I, I usually try to take it. Doesn't mean I want to overextend and throw my tank away to kill them. <clears throat> and you see here, it's just a point of repositioning. I see they have three tanks over there now, only one heavy for us. And these guys are very, very low health. So, it's just, I, I thought smarter to go after these guys. And sure enough, that's, that, that proves to be a good idea. As we were to take off both those tanks are their team. Now at this point, the tank I'm really worried about is Type 59. He has a few kills at this point in the game. So I think he knows what he's doing to an extent. So I want to try to get him off the board. And again, this is just coming from different angles. Uh, but our team's actually taking one of them out, thankfully. But now, unfortunately, like I said, with all those lines of sight through the railway cars, stuff like that, you have to watch, you can get spotted uh, at some point. Now I think here, I, I can't remember totally who I'm going to go after first. As I say, this is Type 59, but this guy's a one-shot, so you might as well take the opportunity to take him down, take him off the board, take a gun off the board. And then hopefully get in on this Type 59. He's going to focus us, which is the means. We run into a building, which is obviously is a great technique to make him miss his shot. He's not going to miss this one, though. And unfortunately, we're not going to pick up the kill. But we pick up just over, I think, 6,000 combined damage on another map that I don't really want to see. Uh, great, good matchup for it. At least it's tier 8. I wish it would have been a tier 10 game, kind of show you that even in those really, really bad matchups, it's possible to have good results. Hopefully this helps you a little bit understand what I like to do, my mentality for city maps. Again, you can still get those early spots, uh, look for damage, uh, lines of sight, stuff like that. Uh, I may do more of these in the future, but until then, uh, I'll catch you next time.